Hello, my name is Ben Lovegrove, and in this video, I'm going to summarize the similarities and differences between the LAPL and the PPL. That is, the Light Aircraft Pilot's License and the Private Pilot's License. If you're unsure of the differences and therefore which license you need, then watch this video to the end, as it may clear up some of the confusion. The right license for you will depend on your aviation aspirations. If you intend to fly for recreational purposes under VFR in the UK with perhaps occasional trips over to continental Europe, then the LAPL is ideal. Theoretically, it will take you less time and expense to gain due to less stringent requirements. On the other hand, if you want to fly privately, perhaps under IFR, and maybe continue flight training to begin a career, then the PPL is probably your best option. The LAPL was introduced by EASA to enable aspiring aviators to gain a license with a shorter syllabus and less strict medical requirements than those of the PPL. The PPL is a globally recognized private pilot's license, whereas the LAPL is particular to Europe. The only additional ratings that a pilot can add to the LAPL are the night rating and an aerobatic rating. The additional ratings that a pilot can add to the PPL are the night, aerobatic, multi-engine and instrument ratings. Both licenses allow the holder to fly single-engine aircraft. The LAPL allows the holder to fly aircraft with a maximum takeoff weight of 2,000 kilograms, with a maximum of three passengers. The PPL allows the holder to fly aircraft with a maximum takeoff weight of 5,750 kilograms, with a maximum of 19 passengers. You can tell from those figures that all LSA, light sport aircraft, and the majority of single engine training aircraft would be accessible to the holder of an LAPL. For example, with a current LAPL, you could fly yourself and three passengers in a Cessna 172 to France and back. The PPL specifies the single engine aircraft privilege within the SCP rating, which is valid for two years. The LAPL specifies the single engine rating within the license itself. The LAPL is valid for life, but as with all licenses and ratings, you have to maintain currency by flying a minimum number of hours every year. To maintain your LAPL, you need to fly 12 hours at least in the last 24 months as pilot in command, including one hour with an instructor. Those 12 hours as pilot in command should include 12 takeoffs and landings. To maintain your PPL, you need to fly 12 hours in the last 12 months, including 6 hours as pilot in command. Those 12 hours should also include 12 takeoffs and landings. The minimum training hours for the LAPL are 30 hours, of which 6 hours should be flown solo, and 3 of which should be solo cross-country flying. The cross-country flying should include one flight of at least 80 nautical miles during which the student lands at one other airfield. The minimum training hours for the PPL are 45 hours, of which 10 hours should be flown solo, and 5 of which should be solo cross-country flying. The cross-country flying should include one flight of at least 150 nautical miles, during which the student lands at two other airfields. That covers the main differences between the two licenses. If you want more information about gaining a PPL or LAPL, then please check the links in the description below or visit my channel homepage. This video is my understanding of the requirements and I make no claims as to the accuracy presented here. Always check the details of licensing, training and validation requirements with your flight instructor. If you want to check every detail of licensing, then please visit www.caa.co.uk forward slash general dash aviation and check the sections entitled Learning to Fly and Pilot Licenses Ratings and Medical Certificates. Thanks for watching. If you found anything of interest in this video, then please subscribe to my channel by clicking the red subscribe button. And don't forget to click the bell. That way you'll be notified directly of any new videos. While you're there, please click the thumbs up button to give it a like 
and post a comment to tell me what you liked or disliked about this video. Finally, please share this video with friends and colleagues and in social media so that others may view it and comment. By subscribing, commenting, liking and sharing these videos, I'll know what I'm doing right and will continue to make videos that people want to watch.